So now that we've gone over how to add icon images that we get directly from Xcode into our application, I want us to now go over how we can add our own images into our application and get them to show up on the screen. So the first thing we're gonna do guys is go to this assets folder and we need to actually import some images into the app, right? These images have to come from somewhere. So I've downloaded a couple images on Safari. You guys can literally just go to Google Images and download whatever image you want or use images you have saved on your computer. And we're literally just gonna drag and drop them into our Xcode project like this, into the assets folder. So I have some images of Black Panther because he's my favorite superhero, RIP, to Chadwick Boseman. And then I have this Facebook icon because, well, I work for Facebook. So I'm gonna rep them, right? Because it's a dope company. And now we're gonna go over how we can get these images to show up on our app and how we can modify them, adjust the size, the frame, and even the color to these images that we've imported into our application. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new file, guys. So new file, Swift UI view, hit next. I'm gonna call this images tutorial, like so. And this is going to be very similar to how we created our icon images with a slight difference. So really quickly, uh, let's let our preview connect and I'm gonna go here and say image. And instead of saying system name, you're just gonna pass in a string. And this string has to match up directly with one of your icon image names, or sorry, not icon image, your image names that you imported into your project. So I'm just literally gonna go ahead and copy this name, Black Panther-1, and put it right here. And you guys are gonna notice that when I hit resume, I'm gonna get this massive image of the Black Panther showing up. So this is the image in its original size, okay? So this is like a massive image and it doesn't fit the iPhone screen. So let's go over how we can actually get it to shrink down to fit the screen. So you're just gonna go ahead and apply that dot resizable modifier and it's gonna shrink the image down to fit the frame of the screen minus the safe area. So if I were to say dot ignores safe area, it will fill out the entire screen but we don't necessarily care about that right now. Um, we do care about how this image is being rendered, right? The aspect ratio is all kinds of janky right now. So this is gonna give you guys a much better idea of the scale to fit or scale to fill stuff um, than when we were working with the icon images. So let's go ahead and apply another modifier to this image. We can say scaled to fill, right? So it's going to make the image look much better but we notice that like the image size is still all kinds of crazy, right? So it's still not fitting the screen the way we would want it to, even though the image looks much better in this scenario. So what we can do to render this or solve this is we can actually apply our own frame to the image. So before resizable, let's go ahead and give the image a frame of like 200 by 200 and delete the alignment. So you guys are gonna notice that it shrinks that down and let's actually remove scale to fill and place it before that. So, okay, let's see what this is doing. So we're saying, hey, this image is resizable. We wanna scale it to fill, right? That's the content mode we're just, that we're defining or the aspect ratio. And then we define this frame. So you guys notice that the frame is this 200 by 200, but the image actually bleeds outside of that frame or extends beyond that frame. So this is where we can apply that dot clipped modifier and it will actually clip the edges of the frame or of the image so that it fits within the frame. So let's go ahead and now see what happens if we apply the scale to fit modifier. So let's actually comment out that, that clipped guy and make this dot scale to fit. Okay, so you guys notice that we have a very different scenario here in terms of how the image gets rendered with its aspect ratio. So when you say scale to fit, it's going to keep the original like aspect ratio of the image. So this is obviously like a portrait style image and it's gonna make sure that it fits within that frame. So it's not gonna fill itself out to give you like the optimal size. It's just gonna make sure that it shrinks to fit within that frame and it maintains the original aspect ratio. So when you say scale to fit, you don't need to say clipped, but the most common configuration of 
rendering uh, images uh, that we import into our project is gonna be scaled to fill and clipped, right? Because we define this frame and we want the image to fill out that entire frame. When we say scale to fit, it maintains the original aspect ratio. So it fits the entire image in there, but it shrinks it down to the frame. So you guys notice that like Black Panther, his uh, shoulder sort of ends right here. But if I say scale to fit, you guys are gonna notice that it sort of fits his entire uh, shoulder in there, right? That's because of the original content size of the image. So when we say scale to fill, we, we do adjust how the image gets rendered and it sort of um, cuts out certain parts of it, but it looks much better, right? So let's hit try again on the preview and that's how it's gonna look and that's pretty good. Um, we could, let's make this a little bit bigger and that's like more closer to what the actual like image is supposed to look like. But like I said before, we can apply our own custom frame to this guy to make it look like that. Now let's, uh, let's change the image to like Black Panther 2. And we notice that this image is rendered out in landscape mode, right? Uh, yeah, the other one was portrait mode. This one is landscape mode, I think, no. Uh, whatever, whichever one is which, right? This one is taller than it is wide and the other one is the opposite. So for example, if I gave this a height of 400, that's gonna be closer to what the original image is supposed to look like. So if I uh, change this back to 300 and say scale to fit, then it's gonna maintain the original aspect ratio of the image and fit it within that frame. But we want it to say scale to fill and then clip it, right? So that's sort of the, the difference between those two options right there um, and how you can apply a custom frame to your image. So now, before we move on guys, I want us to go over how we can apply custom shapes to our image. So if you guys remember in this uh, really cool Twitter app that I have shown you before, um, we have like circular images, right? So this is applying a circular clip shape to the image so that it gets clipped with a circle uh, frame instead of a square frame or a rectangular frame. So let's go over how to do that. Once again, if you guys wanna learn how to build out this Twitter app, I have the link in the description to this video and it's a free six and a half hour YouTube course on how to build Twitter with SwiftUI. Make sure you guys check it out. Anyway, um, instead of saying dot clipped, we can go here and say dot clip shape circle. And what do you know it? That image now renders out as a circular image, which is super, super cool. Um, the frame is still 300 by 300, but the image now has a clip shape of a circle. So let's actually go ahead and change this image from Black Panther 2 to Black Panther 1, just to see how the other image looks. And that looks pretty smooth, right? Like that looks really good. It's just a circular image, but something about it is just really, really user friendly and really aesthetically pleasing with this like circular shape. So SwiftUI makes it really easy for us to do that. We can also see that we can apply different clip shapes, guys. Like you could apply a rounded rectangle clip shape and pass in this corner radius of like 25. And it will make it so that it makes that like a square image with those rounded edges. And you could make the corner radius anything you want. Like you could make it 100. And you guys were to notice that if you give an image a corner radius of half of the width and height, so for example, 150, then it will give it that circular shape, right? And that's because it takes the, like half of this image, uh, the, this 300 by 300 would represent the radius. And it's imagine like this radius line just going all around the square and it sort of cuts out a circle for us. That's like super cool, right? But we don't actually have to define the corner radius mathematically. We could just use that clip shape of a circle or give this rounded rectangle any sort of corner radius that we want, right? Like I could give it 40 and it, it makes it like super rounded. And this also looks really good. But my personal favorite is the clip shape of the circle. Just like this, I think that just looks really good. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for images, guys. We've learned how to work with both icons and our own imported images that we bring into our project, how to display them, how to modify them, 
and all that good stuff. So in the next couple sections, we're gonna work on how to bring all of the stuff we've learned up to this point together to display more complex user interfaces. So get excited for that, guys. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's do it.